Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. Any questions about the posted homework assignments? Any question about them? I can see the uh, online ones, but I can see the written. Having difficulty finding the written homeworks? Um, if, uh, if you'd like, so I've, I've checked it. It's not an exaggeration to say 20 times. So I'm sure that it is, it is actually working. Uh, I would be happy to, after class is over, go over to a computer lab and help you do it if you'd like. Okay. Along with anyone else who would like to do the same. Uh, other questions? Another one? Yes? Okay. It is. All the announcements are posted on Blackboard. And, and a lot of them are important. So you should read them. Yes? Either one. The only thing you have to be careful about at the bookstore is that if you purchase a WebAssign Access at the bookstore, it has to be for the publisher called OpenStax. So the bookstore has WebAssign licenses that correspond to at least two different publishers, and only the OpenStax one works for us. <coughs> Other questions? OK. So today is the 23rd. Last time, uh, we ended talking about the order of operations. So that's where we'll resume. So the order of operations, at least in Ms. Harris's grade in seventh uh, in Ms. Harris's class in seventh grade, was PIMDOS. But that's actually not true. OK, Ms. Harris misled you. Uh, the true order of operations is parentheses come first, then exponents. Multiply and divide are on the same level of precedence and add and subtract are on the same level of precedence. So when you have a tie between a multiply and divide, how is the tie broken? Yeah. Left to right. So these are resolved left to right. And then again, if you have a tie between parentheses or a tie between exponents, then those are also resolved left to right. So let's go through an example of doing this. Uh, say something like 13 times 1 plus 4 to exponent 2 minus 8 to exponent 3 plus 6 times 7. So one of the running jokes in the class is when I make up a exercise, I'm going to try and fit the course number into the exercise as many times as, as often as possible, right? So do you see it? One, three, one, four. Ha, ha, ha. Okay. So, so what we want to do is you have, a, you have an exercise that's like this where it says, I want you to do just one arithmetic operation per line. Okay, so let me explain to you what, what I mean. So, in the first place, what must occur first? Parentheses, right? So then now, there's nothing significant about the shape of these parentheses. So I'll, I'll refer to these as square parentheses. The, tr the proper name for them is brackets, but no one can ever remember, remember that. So I'll just call these square parentheses and those round parentheses. Okay, so then, uh, of all the things that can occur, this is what must occur first. So what that means, effectively, is that you can ignore every, you can and must ignore everything that is outside. Okay, so it's all ignored. Now, within those square parentheses, what must we do? Ah, we have even more parentheses, right? So these parentheses are in here. So part of the point of this exercise is I want you to observe that parentheses can be inside of parentheses. Uh, it, it, at least once, which means it can be done arbitrarily many times, right? Parentheses within parentheses, et cetera. Okay, so that means that we can ignore everything that's outside of those parentheses. So what's, what's the only arithmetic operation inside of the parentheses? The addition. So what arithmetic operation are we supposed to do first? That addition. Okay, let's do it. 13 times 5 squared minus 8 cubed plus 6 times 7. One step. OK, 
Okay, now for the new one. What, what comes first? The parentheses come first, right? So this comes first. So that means we can ignore everything outside of those. Okay, inside of, inside of the uh, parentheses, what arithmetic operations are there? There's an exponent, another exponent, and what's this one? A subtraction, right? So between exponents and subtraction, what comes first? Exponents. And between these two exponents, which one comes first? The one on the left. Okay. Let's do it. 13 times 25 minus 8 cubed plus 6 times 7. And it just continues. <laughs> so here are these parentheses. They must occur first. Here is a subtraction, and here is an exponentiation. Okay, so between the subtraction and the exponentiation, what must occur first? The exponentiation. As a result, 13 times 25 minus 512 plus 6 times 7. Isn't this really boring? It is, I, I'll have to admit it. Uh, but this is the, on that one exercise, that's the only time I'm gonna request that you do it so laboriously. And the reason is because my experience tells me that about one out of four, between one out of five and one out of four of you actually do not know the order of operations. And that is a, that is a critical thing to fix right here at the beginning. So you're gonna do it. I'm going to look at it. It's going to be tedious, but we're going to find everyone who needs my immediate attention. Okay? And the worst thing, the worst thing for, for trying to learn something is thinking that you already know it. Okay? So if you're not, <laughs> I may be talking to you, but you don't realize it yet, is what I'm telling you. Okay. <clears throat> so these parentheses must occur first. Inside of the parentheses, what kind of arithmetic operation is there? Just the subtraction, right? <laughs> so which, which arithmetic operation is furthest to the left? <laughs> the only one, right? Okay. So what's the, what's the difference between those two? Negative 487. Okay, so now these parentheses are there just so we don't lose track that that is a negative 487. So they don't count as parentheses anymore for the purposes of the order of operations. How about that? Does that count as a subtraction? What is that? That's a negation, right? It's not actually a subtraction. It's the neg negation of 487. So what, what operations do we have? Here's a multiplication, that's a multiplication, and this one is a multiplication, right? And this one is an addition. So of the three choices, which one are we supposed to do? The multiplication that's furthest to the left. Okay. Who knows what that is? So that would be negative 6331 plus 6 times 7. Now we have a multiplication and an addition. Which one comes first? But wait, I thought the addition was further to the left. Ah, but, but multiplication is of higher precedence, right? So it doesn't, it's not just further to the left. The leftness comes after you've decided which row you're on. Okay. 
okay? So multiplication occurs first. Negative 6, 3, 3, 1, plus 4, 2. which is negative six, two, eight, nine. Because there was only one operation to do, right? Just this one. So any question about this? Pretty boring. In my estimation, this is why we made computers. Right? <laughs> That's why we organized ourselves into societies, so we wouldn't have to do this anymore. OK. <clears throat> Any questions about that? OK, the next thing is combining like terms. So for example, suppose we have 13x's minus 14y's plus 6x's plus 5y's uh, minus 8x squared. Okay, and what I want from you is to combine like terms. Okay, that's the, that's the request. So that raises the question, what does it mean for terms to be alike? Same variables? So you would, you would say that these are not alike, but these are. How about this? But it has the same variable. I'm just being difficult. So, so it's not just that the variable is the same. It is also that the exponent of that variable is the same. So what is the exponent for in the first place? What's the variable here? x. And what is the exponent for that x? one, right? There's an implied one here and here. So this is 13x to 1, and this is 6x to 1, and this is 8x to 2. Now I agree that, they, that all those things I just said have x's, but only these two are alike. So these are alike. They will need to be combined. What else is alike? The y's for exactly similar reasons. Okay, and then what else is alike to itself? This one, right? So there's three different kinds of things. Okay, red things, green things, and blue things. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reorder them in case you've never seen this done. So 13x will go here, and then I'll put the, the other x's beside it, and then minus 14y, and I'll put the other y's beside it, and then those right there. So let's watch where everything went. <coughs> so this one went here, this one went <coughs> over here. This one went <coughs> there, this one went here, and this one went here. So why, why can we switch the order up? Notice that these lines crossed, right? It's like these two traded positions. What's the name for, for the property that makes that a permissible thing to do? Not, not D, not the D one, it starts with C. Commutative, right? So some of you, you know, we're, we're at university now. You've heard of some commuting students probably. Oh, I'm a commuting student. What does that mean? Yeah, it means you, you, commute means you've got to move around. That's what it means to commute, to move. So what we did here, switching the order of these, this is, this is an example of using the commutative property. <coughs> to move things from side to side. OK. Fine. So now, how do you combine these then? <laughs> right. This is just like this is just like grade school when, when your instructor said at that time, if you have thirteen apples and, and Susie gives you six more apples, because these are alike. Okay, so nineteen. And then how much y do we have? 
minus 9, y, and then how much x squared? That much. Okay, good. So now, when, you, when you're doing an exercise like this, uh, I expect you to show some intermediate steps. You don't have to be quite as verbose as I've just been here, but I want to see some intermediate steps. Okay, one more of these before we go to something else. Um, <clears throat> how about something like, uh, I don't know, 7 UW plus 8 W squared minus 9 U plus 10 W U. Now what's it like? No, no. Let's think about it here for a moment. So uh, how about these? Are these the same? Are these alike, I mean? No. Well, they both have U's. Ah, uh, but they don't both have W's. So the, they're you'll note that they both have a u to 1, so that's good. What is the, uh, what is the exponent for w for this one? one? 1. How about for that one? one. 0, right? There's, this one doesn't have any w's, so they're not alike. They're not alike. Uh, so for similar reasons, these aren't alike, because this one has no, c comparing these two, this one has no u's, this one has no w's, so they're not alike. Are these alike? Yes. Yes. Why are they alike? And what's the name of that? Starts with a C again. It's the same word again. The commutative property, right? Except on this, on this page right here, it was the commutative property of addition, right? And for here, we're going to use the commutative property of multiplication. That UW is the same as WU. Okay, so combining those all together, uh, that'd be what? 17uw plus 8w squared minus 9u. Any question about this one? Okay. So now we move to the next thing, exponentiation. So this is section 1.2. So now, suppose that we say let n be in the naturals and let x be in the reals. So would someone please remind us what is a natural? What's a natural? Positive integer. Positive integer. So that means that n could be something like 1, 2, 1,314. It could be something like that, but it couldn't be 7.5. That's not permissible, okay? Whereas x can be any number whatsoever. Okay, <clears throat> what I'd like to remind you is the following. So 1 times x, that means make one copy of x and add them all up, which is kind of a strange thing to say until I say the other stuff. So what does 2 times x mean? It means make two copies of x and add them all up. What I'm telling you is that this thing that you've seen so many times is shorthand for that. That's what it means. Okay, this, this is a shorter way to say it. Okay, so in that case, what does 3 times x mean? Right, you take three copies of x and you add them all up. Okay, and generally speaking, n times x, where n is a positive integer, a natural, that means you take how many copies of x? n copies of x and add them all up. Now, that's a nice, nice pattern we've found there, but I want you to tell me how does, how does it 
fit with this. So I left myself some, just a little bit of space to write that one. So how many copies of X are we supposed to make? Zero, and then add them all up? What are we supposed to write on the other side? Yeah, but then it doesn't fit with the pattern, right? That's why I'd like for you to observe that uh, in all of these equations right here, the horizontal space on either side of the equals is, un is asymmetric. That's totally not my style. Yeah, so <laughs> if you catch me doing that, that means that I'm saving room to put something there. So what actually goes there? Zero goes there. Zero and zero plus all of that and zero plus all of that and zero plus all of that and zero plus all of that. So why zero? Not, and the reason is not, well, because it works nicely that way. I agree that it does. But, that, but why zero? Why is it that zero goes right here? This is kind of a technical reason. It's because zero is the additive identity. What does that mean? Identity. What, is, what does it mean for a number to be the additive identity? Yeah? It means that any number plus zero will always be. That's right. You take your favorite number in the whole world, 13, 14. Okay? Then if you add zero to it, what do you have? 13, 14. Adding zero, that is the, that is the same as having d done nothing. So that's why it's referred to as the identity el element, sometimes the neutral element. Okay. Now, I, I point this out because, not really to say this, but so that we have a context so I can make the next statement. So if, again, we have such an n and such an r, then I'd like to ask, what does x to exponent 1 mean? Well, it means take one copy of x and do nothing with it, I guess, right there. What does x to 2 mean? Two copies of x, and what am I supposed to do with them? Multiply. Multiply them. That's what it means. So, so far, it's just like the previous thing, very similar to the previous thing, except the, thing, the way we're combining them is not with add, but with multiply. Right? So then, if we have x to 3, that means, well, make three copies of x and combine them all with multiplication. Okay, and then continuing this to the end, x to n, that means make n copies of x and combine them all with multiplication. That's what it means. Notice the horizontal space is currently asymmetric. So what am I going to ask now? What about x to 0 then? Make 0 copies of x and combine them all with multiplication. What does that mean? So how do I have to fix this up? Put a what? A 1. Why a 1? Ah, but that's not, you have the cart oh, before the horse. Identity. It's the multiplicative identity. That's the reason. Okay, you can't have the cart before the horse, right? This goes here because this is the multiplicative identity. It's, why is it the multiplicative identity? Right. Multiplying by 1 is the same as doing nothing. That's the multiplicative identity. Multipl adding 0 is the same as doing nothing. That's why 0 is the additive identity. So what I want you to observe here is a couple things, because a lot of students get tripped up by this. Uh, what is, for example, pi to 0? It's 1. What is 13, 14 to 0? One. What if you take a really big number, like a million, and raise it to exponent zero? What is it? One. One. 
Okay, so this works for all numbers, and there is one exception, and that is zero to zero. This is undefined. So just like you cannot divide by zero, that's not a defined arithmetic operation, you also cannot exponentiate zero to exponent zero. That is not a defined arithmetic operation either. Good. Any questions about these? So now we can start having the rules for combining exponents. <coughs> did it suddenly get a lot brighter? Yeah, it did. OK. So uh, what if we have x to n multiplied by x to m? How can we simplify this statement? Right. It is a single x raised to a combined exponent, n plus m. And your, your secondary school instructor probably said something like, um, when, the bases are this, when you're doing a product and the bases are the same, you add the exponents. I agree entirely. But why should it be this way? Because it's, sh it's surely not true that, that Mrs. Harris in seventh grade was able to just decree this as law. Why is it this way and not some other way? Well, let's look and see. For example, x to 3 multiplied by x to 4. According to the rule above, what should it be? It should be x to 7. But let's really convince ourselves that it, that it is x to 7 without using that rule. What does x to 3 by itself mean? It means x times x times x. That's what it means. So it means x times x times x. And then what does x to 4 mean? Right, it means the same, a similar thing, except now there's going to be four of them in product. So that's what those mean. Now we can drop the parentheses. That is to say that this one corresponds to this one. and this one to this one. So now we can drop the parentheses so that it looks like x times x times x times x times x times x times x. OK, why can we drop the parentheses? There's a reason. There's an A word. Start. Which one? I heard someone say it. Starts with A, ends with associative. That's the one. <laughs> associative, right? Because what does associate mean? Like you can say, this is my associate, or I belong to this association. It means that, yeah, it means that it belongs to the same group. Like these are in a group, those are in a group. Okay? So multiplication is associative, which means that you're allowed to group them how you wish. So what I'm saying is now all of these are in the same group. So now it's just a matter of counting. How many of them are there? Seven. So it's x to seven. So I hope this puts this in a new context, which is to say this is like saying, suppose you have, suppose you have three apples in a product and you multiply them by another group of four apples in a product. How many apples are all in a product? Seven of them. Okay, it's not just some rule. It it simply must be this way. Okay, another one. <clears throat> How about x to n to m, like so? Now, how do you combine the exponents? Now, they, now you combine the exponents by multiplying them. So this, this will be a single x raised to the combined exponent, m times n. But why this and not something else? Why this? Well, let's have an example. 
how about x squared cubed? How about x squared cubed? Now, according to that rule, what should it be? It should be x to power 6. But let's not use that rule yet. Let's convince ourselves that it really must be x to 6 without using that rule. So the fact that that's a cube means that whatever I'm covering up needs to be repeated three times in a product. So I need to write blah, blah, blah three times. So x squared times x squared times x squared. That's what the cube means. <clears throat> okay, then <clears throat> what does the square mean? It means x times x. So this would be x times x because in height times x times x times x times x. And now it's just a, you deassociate, and now it's just a, mat, a matter of counting. How many of them are there? There's six. Alternatively, if I say that you have, uh, you have three bags, and each bag has two apples in it, how many apples do you have? Six, right? It's exactly the same question, but just posed in this very dry way. Okay? So then x to six. So when, when I ask you a question like this, I don't expect you to do this business. I just want you to jump to the end. But I wouldn't ask you something this simple anyway. <laughs> this would just be part of it. OK, one more of these before we can do an, a real exercise. Suppose that we have a product of two variables, x, y, and we, we raise this to exponent n. And how do we? How do we simplify this? How do we carry this out? Hmm. Yes, the exponent distributes. It's going to look like x to n multiplied by y to n. But again, why this way? Why not some other way? The reason is, the reason can be illustrated with an example. How about x, y, and then to exponent 3? The fact that it has exponent 3 means take whatever it is that I'm covering up, make three copies of it, and combine them with a product. That's what it means. So let's write that. It means x, y times x, y times x, y. Okay, and to make sure that all the steps are clear, we could deassociate because multiplication is associative. That's to say we remove the parentheses. And then multiplication is also allows me to move the, ter the factors around. What's the name for permission to move the factors around? Commutative. So then we could commute the factors around till it looks like xxx times y, y, y. OK, but what is x, x, x? It's x cubed. And what's this one? y cubed. So really, all of these exponent laws that you probably already were familiar with before you got here, I want to point out to you that it is just a counting game. It's counting. How many x's <coughs> are there? How many y's or whatever? As a result, I could ask something like, OK, uh, please simplify this <coughs> expression. So how about uh, a cubed times w uh, squared to exponent 5. I want you to carry out this, this operation.
Okay. So, to sort of belabor the point a little bit, since this may be one of the first times you've seen it, I'm going to add a bunch of parentheses so that it is clear exactly what I'm doing. So, I added parentheses. So now, what I want you to observe is that the pattern is, is that this now looks just like this one, looks just like this one. And this, this, is a, this is a thing, and that's a thing. So five's gonna have to distribute to the, to the first thing and also to the second thing. So five is gonna go, a five is gonna go right there, and, another, and a five is also gonna go right there. So that it looks like a cubed to exponent 5 multiplied by w squared to exponent 5. So is it clear how that worked? Okay, then now we have two of the ones that we did two remarks ago. So what does this one become? So how many, how many a's are there? 15, right? So this would be a to 15. And then what about this one? W to 10. Very good. Any question about this one? Now, I want to be quite careful here because this is a place where students can be led astray. <clears throat> and that is that this surely is true that x multiplied by y to exponent n, that is x to n times y to n. All that I did is just copy that thing that's on my page anyway, just six inches above, or I just copied it. Okay? That's true. Yes. Now there's something that looks quite like it that is not true, but many students uh, seem to wish that it was true. How about this, x plus y to exponent n? Is this, is this equal to x to n plus y to n? This is what many students will, so if you're about to copy what I'm gonna write, you need to carefully copy that it is wrong. Okay, many students will want to write this, that this is x to n plus y to n. Is that true? It is not true. This makes the instructor sad. So I'm going to cross that out. I'm going to write a sad face. And I'm going to write wrong just so none of you can be misled. That's not true. That's not true. Now the thing is, the, my hypothesis for why many students do this is because on the one hand, it looks, it looks pretty similar to that one, doesn't it? Because the only thing that's changed is the operation from product to sum. It works for this one, but not for that one. And there's another one that also works, right? If you do this, n multiplied by x plus y, what's that? That's nx plus ny. So in that case, so the n distributes there, and the n distributes there. So these all kind of look the same, but only these two are true. The one in the middle is not. The way that, one way you can remember it is that first you have addition, then you have product, and then you have exponentiation, which is typically denoted this way, but we don't really write that much in our class. Product distributes over sum, exponent distributes over product but exponent does not distribute over sum. Okay, you can do, you can move one step, not two steps. Good. One last thing concerning the way we write things, and that is that this notation, x to negative n, x to negative n is actually shortcut, shorthand notation for one over x to n. Okay. So, 
this one, this remark goes with its companion, and that is that x to n divided by x to m is what? What will it be? Yes, it is x to combined exponent n minus m. So this, this is a matter of definition. This is, this is the way we write things, just as a matter of convenience. But this one, this requires some justification. Let's consider. So how about x to 5 divided by x to 2? Well, according to the rule that's immediately above it, what should the answer be? It should be x cubed. But let's, let's arrive at that conclusion without using that rule so that we can really see that that rule is justified. After all, in the numerator, x to 5 means x times x times x times x times x. And x squared means that. So we've got five x's in the numerator and two in the denominator. So there they all are. There's common factors in the numerator and the denominator, which means that some can be canceled, right? After d c performing all possible cancellations, for example, we could cancel that x with that x. After performing all possible cancellations, how much x will be left in the denominator? None of them, right? So what will the new denominator be? It'll be one because there's an implied one right there. And how much x will be in the numerator? Three of them. Because this is just like saying, <coughs> suppose that you had a bag of five apples and you took away two. How many would you have? You'd have that many. So that this is x cubed. But you have to get accustomed to thinking of it in another direction also. If this is x cubed and this is, say, x to four, now what will the answer be? Well, if we do it in the same way as before, there'd be three in the numerator and four in the denominator, right? And after performing all conceivable cancellations, how much x is there left and where is it left? There's one left and it is in the denominator. So this would be one over x, but what, how are we gonna write that conventionally? x to negative 1. And I'd like for you to observe that what is 3 minus 4? x to negative 1. Okay? So, as a result of this, I could give you an exercise. And say, okay, I want you to uh, express with only positive exponents. Okay, so how about um, <clears throat> x to negative 3 over y uh, squared, and then all of this will raise to exponent 7. How can we go about doing this? To express with what do you think? Kind of tricky. So let me give you a bit of a hint. Uh, the first, in the first step, I'll say that it looks like this. So this kind, so x to negative 3 over y to 2 <coughs> to 7. So all I did, I didn't perform any operations except I put in some parentheses. What's that 7 going to do? It's going to distribute. How will it distribute? One copy here, 
and also one copy here. So the first step, in the first step, it looks like x to negative 3 to exponent 7, and then divide by y to 2 to exponent 7. Okay, any question about this step? So now we can carry out uh, the numerator and, denom and denominator further. So what will, be the, what will be x's exponent after carrying that out? Negative 21, right? So x to negative 21, and then uh, y to 14. Any question getting to here? Okay, so now my question to you is, is have we satisfied the instructions? No, right? The instructions say express with only positive exponents, and at the present time, um, x has a negative exponent of negative 21. How do we fix that? Right. So this can be moved to a denominator. So continuing down here, this would look like 1 over x to 21 times y to 14. Now let's, so, so that's a pretty standard step, but why should, it, why should that work? So, so the, the general step is, is that what would be y's exponent if I moved it to the numerator? It'd be negative 14. And then if I moved it back, it'd be 14 again. So when you take, when you take something, uh, a, an expression like this, and you move things that have exponents either from numerator to denominator or vice versa, what happens is that the exponent is negated. So right here, if I were to move the y's up, what would their exponent be up there? Negative 2. And if we were to move the x's down, the exponent would be positive 3. Okay? And we'll talk more about that next time. So have a nice uh, Wednesday.